In this laboratory, you will investigate the addition of force vectors. The objectives for this laboratory are Use the force table to determine the vector sum of two perpendicular forces. Compare experimental values with calculated values for the magnitude and direction of a resultant force. And use the force table to demonstrate the vector addition of three forces. To conduct your experiment, you will use a force table with pulleys, a ring, and strings, and mass holders and slotted masses. Set up the force table according to its instruction manual and become familiar with its operation. In part one, you will use the force table to determine the magnitude and direction of an equilibrant force that balances the vector sum of two perpendicular forces. And you will calculate experimental values for the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. Then you will compare your experimental values to the actual values. Attach three pulleys to the force table and three strings to the ring. Hang a 50 gram mass hanger from each string. Label the pulleys and their associated hangers A, B, and E. The weights of masses hanging from the strings will exert forces on the ring in the directions of the pulleys. Record the masses and directions for the forces that will be applied by hangers A and B. Also record the value for the local gravitational acceleration. Then calculate and record the magnitudes of the two forces that will be applied to the ring. The force in newtons is equal to the mass in kilograms times the local gravitational acceleration in meters per second squared. Position pulleys A and B and place masses on hangers A and B to apply forces on the ring at the magnitudes and directions you recorded. Then, using trial and error, put masses on hanger E and adjust the direction of pulley E to center the ring around the pin. You may need to jiggle the ring slightly to overcome friction and allow the ring to move to the center. Record the values of the mass on the string and the direction of pulley E that center the ring as experimental values representing the equilibrant force. Then, calculate and record an experimental value for the magnitude of the equilibrant force. Using the experimental values of the magnitude and direction of the equilibrant force, Calculate and record experimental values for the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. The magnitude of the resultant force will be the same as the magnitude of the equilibrant. The direction of the resultant will be 180 degrees from the direction of the equilibrant. Next, you will calculate the actual values of the magnitude and direction of the resultant. Calculate and record the magnitudes of the X and Y components of the two applied forces. Add the X components of the two applied forces to find the X component of the resultant force. Add the Y components of the two applied forces to find the Y component of the resultant force. Record the values. From the X and Y components of the resultant force, Use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the magnitude of the resultant force. Also, from the X and Y components, calculate the direction of the resultant force. Finally, calculate the percent error in your experimental value for the magnitude of the resultant force and the absolute difference between your experimental value and the actual value for the direction of the resultant force. When you have completed part one, proceed to part two, addition of three forces. In part two, you will add three forces to determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. You will calculate the equilibrant force and you will use the force table to demonstrate the forces. Attach four pulleys to the force table and four strings to the ring.
Hang a 50 gram mass hanger from each string. Label the pulleys and their associated hangers A, B, C, and E. The weights of masses hanging from the strings will exert forces on the ring in the directions of the pulleys. Record the masses and directions for the forces that will be applied by hangers A, B, and C. Also, record the value for the local gravitational acceleration. Calculate and record the magnitudes of the three forces that will be applied to the ring. The force in newtons is equal to the mass in kilograms times the local gravitational acceleration in meters per second squared. Next, calculate and record the magnitudes of the X and Y components of the three applied forces. Add the X components of the three applied forces to find the X component of the resultant force. Add the Y components of the three applied forces to find the Y component of the resultant force. Record the values. From the X and Y components of the resultant force, use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the magnitude of the resultant force. Also, from the X and Y components, determine the direction of the resultant force. Because the resultant force may not lie in the first quadrant, you must use the appropriate equation from the resultant force direction equations table. Using the values of the magnitude and direction of the resultant force, calculate and record values for the magnitude and direction of the equilibrant force. The magnitude of the equilibrant force will be the same as the magnitude of the resultant. The direction of the equilibrant will be 180 degrees from the direction of the resultant. To apply an equilibrant force on the force table, you will hang a mass from a fourth string attached to the ring. Calculate and record the mass required to produce a weight equal to the equilibrant force. Next, you will demonstrate the addition of the three forces using the force table. Position the four pulleys and place masses on the hangers to apply forces on the ring at the magnitudes and directions that you recorded for forces A, B, C, and the equilibrant force. Observe the position of the ring. If the equilibrant force balances the sum of the three applied forces, the ring will be centered around the pin. You may need to jiggle the ring slightly to overcome friction and allow the ring to move to the center. If the ring is still not centered, adjust the direction of the pulley and the mass on the string that is producing the equilibrant force as necessary to cause the ring to move to the center. When the ring is centered, record the mass and the direction that centers the ring as experimental values representing the equilibrant force. Then calculate and record an experimental value for the magnitude of the equilibrant force. Compare the values that you calculated for the magnitude and direction of the equilibrant force with your experimental values.